Welcome to this presentation. My name is Oscar Quevedo Teruel and I will try to show you what is the meaning of Sagüero resolution and which techniques are able to achieve it. Then Sagüero resolution means that uh, we will go further of the diffraction limit. Then this means that we will not be governed anymore by lambda over two resolution. For instance, if we have two different objects and we have an antenna which can transmit some electromagnetic waves, these waves will have a certain frequency and associated to this frequency will be a wavelength. Then if these two objects have a distance that is higher than lambda over two, traditionally we will be able to distinguish uh, both of them. However, if the distance is uh, lower than lambda over two, we will not be able to distinguish. Then if we can just obtain this uh, wavelength resolution, we will be able to produce uh, higher communication rates or we will be able to produce uh, imaging systems that they will have a higher resolution than the conventional ones. Then, which techniques can be used to obtain this subway resolution? There are mainly three. The first one is the call uh, time reversal, that uh, in at least in the part of the electromagnetics, uh, Professor Fink is uh, one of the pioneers. The second one is negative uh, refractive index, in which uh, Professor Prendry is uh, the main pioneer of this technique. And the third one, is uh, the Maxwell Fish Island that it was recently proposed by uh, Professor Leonhardt. Then let's go to the first one, time reversal. Time reversals uh, consist in the next. Imagine that we have a wave that is generated. This wave is just uh, going uh, to propagate. And we can just uh, capture this uh, wave that is propagated with uh, several uh, receivers. Then we can take the, the signal that we already received we just uh, reverse the time and we transmit from this sensor this wave. And then if we do this one, what we will obtain is just the same uh, source, uh, but uh, we can locate it with a uh, subwebinar resolution. Time reversal uh, has some limitations. For instance, the first one and the most important one is that it requires uh, several antennas or receivers. Moreover, uh, the resolution is associated with the number of receivers. For instance, imagine that we have this point that we, we want to detect. We just um, determine a circle around and we have to place all these sensors around this uh, point in order to detect it uh, correctly. The number of these receivers uh, will just determine the resolution that we can obtain. Another option is just to, to use a cavity. This uh, metallic cavity is going to close all our world inside and then uh, we can achieve uh, this equivalent resolution. As advantages, uh, we can mention that it's a very robust technique and also that this provides a broadband of operation. The second technique that I wanted to, um, to explain here in this presentation is a negative, negative refractive index. Um, then the operation is, in mind that we have a normal conventional material. If we have an incident wave in this uh, conventional material, we will obtain a positive refractive index, like this blue line. However, if we, what we have is a metamaterial uh, and we just insert with a wave, it will produce a negative refractive index. This means that the propagation inside of this material arriving with this one, it will have an angle that is in the other side of the reference line. Then imagine the next uh, configuration in which we have a conventional material, a metamaterial and another conventional material. If we have an object, the ball that we were considering before, and this object emits some electromagnetic wave, waves, this will propagate in the conventional material and they will just uh, have a negative refractive index in, inside of this uh, metamaterial. When we arrive to the second conventional material, we will have again a negative refractive index and then we can just focus the image in the other side and this image will have uh, a wavelength resolution. The implementation of these metamaterials has been generally proposed uh, with the use of uh, periodic extractors. This technique uh, has uh, some limitations. Uh, for instance, it uh, presents some difficulties in the real implementation. We need to use uh, metamaterials and these metamaterials are dispersal materials. Then um, the operation is narrow band. And finally, these metamaterials, they present usually high losses. The third technique is the Maxwell Fisalen that was recently proposed by the Professor Leonhardt. And 
In this technique, what, the, the, what we want is just to reproduce the effect of a sphere in a 2D configuration. For instance, we have here this sphere, we have an emission that is coming from the left, and if this emission is coming from the left, all the different paths in the surface of the sphere are going to have exactly the same length. Then, with the stereographic projection, we can just obtain the same effect in only one plane. Then, if we have a source, this source is going to produce an image in the other side. Then here, uh, again, if we have an emission in one of part of the sphere, we are going to obtain with a wave resolution in the other side of the sphere the same source. That we can do the, also this one in a plane. For instance, uh, here, if we have a source, we are going to obtain the image in the other side. This Maxwell Fisher lens also has some limitations. Uh, the first one is that uh, it uh, has uh, frequency dependence. This means that it will be an arrow band. And the second one is that it's an invasive uh, technique. We have to open the object that we want to do the image. However, as advantage is, uh, has the implementation is uh, very easy and also is very cheap, since only the electric materials are required. Well, with this, uh, we finish uh, this presentation. I hope that uh, you enjoyed. If you have any doubt, you can also contact with me in my email address. Thank you very much.